everyone, in today's video I'm going to be showing you an extreme over the top extraordinary sloth. So the nail is sculpted on my practice finger and it is a gorgeous green leafy facade and then if you look underneath the nail you have a sloth hanging down. I love this design, I love sloths. As my daughter Melody would say, she calls them slossies, which just cracks me up. But they are so cute, they're so sweet. I hope you guys like this one as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to all my future videos as well. So we are going to begin by folding this nail form. Make sure you fold it with the nail form backing still in place so it doesn't stick to itself. Really get that crease nice and sharp. Use something that you can roll against the nail form so that the crease is precise. After you have your nail form completely creased, you're going to remove the nail form from the nail form backing, and then you're going to close the end. Make sure it's nice and long, and then you're going to fit this onto your nail. If you're using a practice finger like I am, hopefully that'll give you a good start. I would recommend practicing a crazy shape like this on a practice finger instead of going straight onto a human just because it'll give you a little opportunity to move your finger all around in different directions and see it from different angles without worrying about hurting the person that you're working on or practice on yourself. I find it a little easier to do these things on myself versus somebody else too. Next, after your nail form is all fit and all fit on there and lined up and straight, go ahead and start sculpting your nail. Like any time I begin sculpting a nail enhancement that is on a nail form, I'm going to take clear acrylic and blend the natural nail down onto the nail form and apply a thin layer of clear acrylic over the entire nail plate. Clear acrylic typically will have great adhesion in comparison to other colors of acrylic, not necessarily like a natural shade of acrylic, but say um, like the green I'm going to be using later, later, the clear acrylic is going to adhere better. So having that thin layer of clear acrylic first will just give you a better, a better go at this. So I'm going to take and I'm going to pick a line on the side of my nail form, make sure that I remember which one it is from left to right, and I'm going to use that as my guideline for the edges of my edge, for the free edge of my nail. So as I'm kind of matching it up from side to side, I am also making this like a bat wing, a little bat wing edge nail. So it's kind of a combination of shapes. That's the fun thing with these extreme shapes. Yes, there are rules. And if you're going to a nail competition or something and you are going to be judged on the specificity of the nail shape that you're sculpting. Yeah, probably follow all of those rules. If you are doing this for art and for fun and for you, you don't have to follow all of those rules. If this is a video and you're like, you know, I'm going to learn how to sculpt an edge nail and I'm going to learn all of the things so I can go to Nail Olympia and I'm going to take home gold, not the video for you. However, if you're like, you know, I just want to see kind of the process of sculpting an edge nail, this is the video for you. So you've got this clear base. I'm going to make sure that I use the belly of my brush to press the sides. This is going to be the sides of that, that flat panel on either left and right all the way down this nail. So make sure you use the belly of your brush. You want this to blend smoothly from right about the natural nail smile line is where you want kind of the peak of that curve to be. So that's like the stopping point of where the nail is smooth and curved. And then it starts to fade into that crease down the center. So that's kind of that point where it goes, oh, okay, this is where we have the curved and this is where, oh, all of a sudden we have this spine going down the center of the nail. Once I have a decent base of my nail, I'm going to go over the entire thing with green. This is, I'm going to really build in the shape here. I'm going to kind of define the shape a little bit more clearly. I'm going to bring the acrylic down one side of the nail at a time. I'm not going to try to do both sides. I'm not going to focus on both sides. I'm going to just put my attention on one side at a time. When you're sculpting an edge, mentally break the nail down into three sections. The curved area, which looks very similar to any standard nail enhancement, which is going to be from the cuticle down to about the free edge. And then you, or the, not the free edge, but the smile line of the natural nail. And then you have the left side of the the extension area and the right side of the extension area. Work on those three areas individually and together they kind of go together. At some point you'll probably have to smooth over the three of them and kind of unify them but keep them separated in your mind because then that'll help give you those two very precise sides with the spine down the center, the nice curve transition. It'll help you make the whole thing look so you know so intense with that with that sharp crease down the middle so we've got the left we got the right use the belly of your brush don't forget about the belly of your brush it's there to help you it's there to help you no matter what but in this particular shape it's there to help you even more than ever before i am going to take and this is some of my blending blending beads after i've got those first few in there that's just going to help get the all those three zones that I'm going to take and I'm going to add wherever I think it needs it small wet beads of acrylic in between to make sure that they 
transition from one zone to the next. You don't want it to look like in the end that you can see this one, two, three, but that is kind of how it goes when you are sculpting it. Those are the three sections to kind of pay attention to as you're working. Once you are happy with this and it looks pretty good, go ahead and remove that nail form backing or the nail form. Do so carefully as not to break your nail. I know that sounds crazy. It's an acrylic nail. It's nice and strong. I always remove my nail forms very cautiously. It's just one of those um, I've broken enhancements before, especially crazy ones like this. You know, the tip of the nail will break off or something when I go too hasty. So I'm just always, always err on the side of caution. When I'm going to file the underside of this nail, I'm going to do it at least partially the same side left and right as far as the underside goes at the same time. I'm going to do the right and the left side of that extension area on the top of the nail separately. I want that center spine to be sharp. It should almost be too sharp to touch. It should be like a knife going down the middle of the nail. And then I'm going to use a hand file. Same thing. Do not take your file and go up and over the middle of this nail. Left and right are completely separately filed. The only then you're going to go slowly up and over right around that that nail bed area and then left and right completely separately. Now, if you were going to leave this as an edge nail, you're going to buff it, you're going to apply top coat, and you are going to stare at it and be um, completely impressed with the marvel that is your sculpting skills. However, I'm going to go through all of this process of making this incredible, <laughs> gorgeous edge nail, and then I'm going to cover it with leaves because, well, kind of my style, you know, just, just sort of how it goes. So I'm going to sculpt a series of leaves in two colors of green acrylic on a nail form backing. Save that nail form backing if you want to, the one that you folded in half with your edge nail from before. And we're going to start layering these leaves all over this edge nail. The great thing with having the edge as a base is it gives you this really beautiful start to this. It's one of those things where, yes, you have an edge nail. Yes, it is gorgeous. Yes, it is there. Does it need to be perfect? No, because I'm going to cover it up can it be perfect anyways? Well, yeah, of course. But do you have to make sure it's perfect? No. Um, I do just in my own perfection and my own style, but I'm going to keep continuing sculpting these leaves in sets of three. I find for my acrylic in the way that my acrylic sculpts in how fast it cures, that sculpting things in sets of three is the perfect speed. It kind of is a good tempo for me. And I just feel like in my, my sculpting style that that just works really well. After I have all of my larger, darker green leaves, I'm going to take and sculpt smaller, lighter green leaves. Because these are smaller, I did find I could do four at a time. One of those situations where the longer you work with a product, the more you understand it, the more you understand your skill set and what works best for you, the better, the better off you are. You may find that you can actually work faster making three leaves at a time versus four or making six leaves at a time. And for me, I found that once I started dealing with this acrylic, I could probably make a couple more at a time. It's fine. I can sculpt these and stick them on there pretty quickly. And it also depends on your brand. If you are somebody that uses multiple brands of acrylic, I do that. I have a bunch of different brands that I use. Some of them will cure quicker than others. And so you might be able to make more or less depending on the speed that your powder cures. It's not just all the monomer. Powders make a big difference too. For the branch, underneath your nail, you're going to take some brown acrylic. This is for where your little sloth is going to be hanging out. And you're going to just kind of push that acrylic back and forth and you're going to make your little sloth branch. Press, 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 press. And then after you have that, I'm going to just sort of smooth it out. Hold up your nail to make sure that it looks like it's the right size, the right shape. After you have your branch where you're pretty happy with it, you don't want to look smooth and perfect. You do want to use the tip of your brush to sort of you know, make it look like it's rough bark. You're going to glue that underneath your nail right into the crook of the edge. It should fit in there pretty nicely. It should just kind of rest right inside that crease in this very underneath center spine of the nail. Hold that until the glue begins to grab. Once you feel like, yep, I can let this go without it completely falling apart, go ahead and let go. Then take more of your brown acrylic and you're going to secure that underneath right where the nail and your branch connect to each other first. And then go ahead and add more acrylic to the side of your branch that was down on the nail form backing. I found that because I had a curve that wasn't completely symmetrical, it was a little bit heavier of a curve on one side than the other, that it fit better with the curved or part towards the tip of the nail. So that was the reason that mine was glued in in the specific orientation that it was. Now, using whatever colors you feel are slothically appropriate, I am going to start sculpting my sloth. Now, of course, you can sculpt with whatever colors do seem like realistic sloth colors. That's one option. 
or you can sculpt with completely ridiculous sloth colors. Your choice. The reason I mention this is because I did make a pair of earrings that is a sloth that is hanging that is a very similar concept. You uh, might be able to tell that we are a sloth loving crowd over at my house. Uh, that sloth that I did that was the pair of earrings was teal and he's completely adorable or they're completely adorable. If you are interested in them, I will put that linked in the description box below. I do highly recommend giving that video uh, a little look-see if you are a sloth fan. However, if you do want it to be more, more realistic, which is kind of the goal I was going for here, then go ahead and grab more muted tones, kind of a, almost a purplish beige-ish col beige color is what I was going for. Kind of like a slightly bruised purple or slightly, slightly bruised tan. You know, like when the bruise is almost gone, but there's still just a glow of it there. That's the color that I have here. I'm going to glue my sloth with his arm and leg that are towards you onto my branch. After that arm and that leg are glued to the branch, I'm going to take more acrylic and I'm going to secure them. It's the same process as I did for the branch. Glue first, acrylic second. It seems to work well for me. Anytime I say some of these things, my goal is not that you follow my instructions to a T. My goal is that you see what works for me and the chance that maybe it'll work for you. Now, it may not. It may not be what works for you. And you may find that just using acrylic for all your adhesion works for you. Or you may find that using just nail glue is strong enough and you don't have to add that little bit of acrylic to support to secure it more before continuing on and you can just keep sculpting and going about your business. So please take whatever I say as a suggestion, not as the over, you know, overruling rule because it absolutely is not. It's just, you know, it's what works well for me. On that note, if you are watching my videos and you're thinking, why does she always do it that way? It's completely ridiculous. It's so much easier to do it this way, which whatever it is that I'm doing, please tell me. I would love to know whatever it is that you guys are doing that seems like it's easier. If there is something, it would be super helpful. I take absolutely zero offense whenever somebody gives me a suggestion or an idea that they have. Sometimes I will come back with the reason I don't do certain things a certain way. And, you know, it's just kind of creates an open dialogue of discussion on nails. And who doesn't want to talk more about nails? If you're in this environment, obviously, you know, more nail conversation. Most of us, this may be overstepping. I find that I don't have enough people that are willing to listen to me about nails. So, you know, if we can have an open dialogue in the comment section about whatever nail related topic you want to bring up, I'm all for it. So if you have something, go for it. I'm all ears or fingers and typing and eyeballs. Yeah, I'm in a very weird, very weird mood this evening, if you haven't noticed. So we've got our sloth. We're going to build up some extra sloth um, body here. We want him to be well fed. Round out his arms, his legs, his face. Go ahead, flip that guy over. Do the same to his rump and his back belly. Do all of this. I'm going to use my bigger brush. Usually whenever I'm doing my 3D art, that's like the focal point, I switch over to my little 3D brush. But because there's quite a bit of space here to cover on the sloth, I am going to use my number eight, which for me is what I consider to be my bigger brush. I don't typically use really big brushes. Number eight's pretty much the upper size of what I typically use these days. Um, but when you use a brush that's too small for something like this, you're gonna end up with a lot of separate little lumps. Whereas if you can manage to use a brush that's bigger and use a single bead of acrylic for different sections at a time and blend them together instead of using multiple beads of acrylic for each part, then it is going to just look a little smoother. It's going to just have a little more of a, you know, a flawless end result, even though, you know, flaws are part of the process, but it just helps keep everything looking nice and smooth, smooth operator. Then after we have our sloth and he's at this point, grab a secondary color of acrylic. If you are going for the funky colors, like I did with the pair of earrings, it'll be a lighter shade of whatever it is that you're doing or a complimentary lighter shade for me, because I am going realistic here. I'm going to go with a lighter shade of kind of a creamyish color, and I'm going to be adding more face to my sloth. I'm going to blend my original color up over that face a little bit, going back and forth between the two until I'm happy with how that area is going. Then I'm going to grab a darker color. Same thing. If you're doing this with funky colors, the, whatever your original color is, grab a darker version of it or depending if it's a color that could tolerate black. You could also use black if you don't have a darker version. And you're going to be adding some shading. 
do this with tappy motions with your brush. You want to use kind of like a swipey tappy combination. That's going to give you a slight fur look. If you just blend it out where it looks completely flawless and perfect and smooth, like you would if you're trying to create a really pretty ombre, it's not going to look as textured. And you're actually going for a little bit of a textured thing here because that is going to make it look slightly furry. So it's kind of like a brush tap is sort of the movement that you're going for. And it's very, very wet acrylic. You want it to be very, very thin, very very flowy that's going to make it so you're not adding a whole bunch of height when you're doing this shading you're really just adding the pigment with yet another darker color which is probably going to be black if you haven't already gotten to black yet you're going to add the little dark areas around your sloth eyes again this is probably going to be very thin acrylic where you're mainly just adding the color you're not adding a whole bunch of thickness and you're going to do the same thing for your sloth's nose. And now you're going to add in your sloth's eyes, a little more details, whatever colors and anything else you need with acrylic paint. This is now we're switching over to paint. This isn't the liquid and powder acrylic system. This is craft paint in my case, like you would buy at Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, etc. And just keep adding those little details. Add more fur texture if you want, add some highlights, add some lowlights, whatever it feels like you want to and you need to. I personally love to add little highlights and little fur textures. I'm also going to take and add some toenails as a sloth's toenails are really quite critical to their general personality, I feel like. And you know, what kind of nail tech would I be if I were to deny this sloth long toenails or fingernails? Either one. I'm going to add a little dot of white inside the eyes, some texture to my branch with a little bit of a lighter shade of brown paint than I used to sculpt the branch with. You can add some details to these leaves that are up above. You can do all kinds of stuff to this or you can do very little because there was a lot of detail that was sculpted in. This is a dealer's choice situation. I'm going to make just one single line down the center of each of my leaves with a darker shade of green than they were sculpted with on the lighter green leaves, not on the darker green ones. I'm going to apply some 3D glaze over the top of my leaves and some matte top coat over the top of my little sloth and his branch. And that is it. He is adorable. I am so in love with this nail. Like I said before, I highly recommend the earring video that will be available down below. Oh, where you can wait about 20 more seconds and it will be available in this video right there. There it is. You can click on that and you can watch that earring video too. I hope you guys like that one and this one and I will see you all next time. Bye.